All right, so now we're going to get into an actual legit programming language. HTML is a markup language and CSS is a style sheet language, both used to physically display content. JavaScript, on the other hand, is a high level programming language that's used mostly to create interactive effects in the browser. Now, we are able to run JavaScript on the server with Node.js and also in other non web based environments like PDF documents site-specific browsers and desktop widgets, but we're not going to get into that in this section. Okay, so we're basically going to be looking at client-side JavaScript in the browser. All right, now, when we classify programming languages with certain terms, uh, JavaScript has qualities that can be described using a whole a wide range of terms. So first, it's a scripting language, and a scripting language is a programming language that supports scripts or programs written for a special runtime environment that automate the execution of tasks. So it doesn't do something and wait and then do something else. It has a script to follow. It executes those tasks until the script is finished. And in the case of JavaScript, this all happens within your web browser. All right. It's also known as an interpreted language, which means that it doesn't have to be compiled into machine code for the system to run it. This is opposed to a language that's compiled like C++ or Java or some of the other high level languages. Um, and by the way, you probably already know this, but JavaScript has absolutely nothing to do with the Java programming language. JavaScript is also an untyped language. And uh, what that means is that it doesn't use a static type system where all of all variables and objects have to be uh, specifically assigned to a type such as an, a string or an integer or something like that. Um, there are supersets of JavaScript such as TypeScript that can use types but JavaScript alone does not. Alright so when you create a variable you don't have to worry about assigning it a, to a string or whatever. JavaScript is also considered to be multi-paradigm, which means that you can code in different ways. So it's object-oriented at heart. Everything in JavaScript is an object. For the most part, it's prototype-based. Classes are available in the newer ES6 version, uh, which is the, late, the latest stable version, but that's something that is very new. Uh, it can also be used as an imperative language, which uses statements that can change a program's state. And then it's also used as a good old fashioned functional language, which is just code composed of a set of functions. So JavaScript uses the ECMAScript specification. It's essentially a set of rules standardized by ECMA International, which is a nonprofit standards organization for information and communication systems. Now, JavaScript isn't the only language that uses this standard. You also have JScript. Uh, which is kind of Microsoft's adaptation of JavaScript, ActionScript, and then some others. All right, so here is some notable versions of ECMAScript and JavaScript. ES5 was standardized back in 2009, and it has pretty much complete compatibility in just about every browser. Uh, this is the most common version and what we'll be looking at mostly. Now ES6, also called ES2015, added a bunch of new features like classes, arrow functions, generators, modules. Uh, ES6 features are not all compatible with some of the modern browsers. Um, so in order to use them, sometimes you'll have to use some additional tools such as Babel, uh, which can take that ES6 code and, com and compile it into ES5 so that it can run in, in different versions of different browsers. And then ES7 or ES2016 is the most recent version, but um, there's still, it's still in the works. And again, you would need to implement other technologies to compile it down to um, either ES5 or e even ES6. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some of the JavaScript syntax. I'm gonna go through that, go through uh, some of the syntax very, very briefly, uh, but we will get into more of it as we go along. All right, so JavaScript syntax is a set of rules for how JavaScript programs are built. JavaScript uses most of the usual instructions and syntax that many programming languages use, 
such as variables, expressions, arrays, objects, loops, conditionals, comparisons, switches, and functions. All right, just to name a few. So when we talk about JavaScript output, there's a few different things that we can do. Uh, we'll probably use console.log the most, and what this does is it'll print whatever we ask it to out to the console within a browser or even within a terminal. Um, for instance, in Chrome, if you hit F12, it'll open up the, the Chrome tools and you can use the console there. We also have window.alert or just alert, which will display content in an alert box that pops up in the browser. We have document.write, which can display content within a script tag in the HTML. And then we also have inner HTML, which uh, we can use by accessing an HTML element with document.getElementById and then output it to that element. So variables are used to store values. JavaScript uses the var keyword to declare variables and an equal sign to assign values. So and if we look down here, you can see we have var x. So we're creating a variable called x and you want to end your lines with a semicolon. Here we're saying that x is going to be equal to the integer or the number 100. And you can make this shorter by just saying var x equals 100 if you'd like. Now there are some rules to variables. They are case sensitive, so make sure you're aware of that. Variables can contain letters, numbers, underscores, and dollar sign symbols. Okay, but they must begin with a, either a letter, underscore, or dollar sign. You can't begin a variable with a number. All right. And that's, that's pretty much universal for uh, a lot of the popular programming languages. Now an expression is just a combination of values, variables, and operators which computes a value. So any of these are expressions 2 times 5. You can also have variables x times 5 and strings. So here we're saying hello world. And the plus sign is used to concatenate. Um, you can concatenate strings or... Uh, JavaScript, whether it's a variable or a function, whatever it may be. Comments are really easy. This is a single line comment. You want to use the double forward slash. And then if you need to use more than one line, you can use the slash asterisk and end it with uh, asterisk slash. And you can put your comment on as many lines as needed. Arrays, so if you have any experience with any other programming languages, then you probably have used arrays before. They allow us to store multiple values into a single variable. So in this example, we have a variable called names, and we're setting it to an array with four different names. All right, and notice that it has, it uses uh, square brackets, and if they're strings, they have to be in quotes. Okay, if they're numbers, they don't have to be, strings do. And then here, if we want to access, let's say, Bob, we can console log names and then zero. Okay, this pertains to the index of the value in the array. Now, it's zero. Arrays are zero-based. So if you want to access Bob, that would be zero. Jim would be one. Jose, two. Paula, three, and so on. Okay, so just remember that arrays are zero-based. Next, we have loops. Loops can execute a block of code as long as a condition is true and then it will repeat that until the condition is no longer true. So there's a couple kinds, different kinds of loops. We have a for loop. You can see we're using the for keyword and we're setting three different parameters. We're setting i to zero and then we're saying as long as i is less than 10 then we're going to run this code and we're also going to increment it by one by saying i plus plus. So essentially this is going to console log whatever i is and each time it goes through, it's going to add one to it because we're incrementing it. All right, so as long as it's less than 10, this will keep running. Once it hits um, 10, then it'll stop. This while loop does the same exact thing. It's just a different format. You want the while keyword, put in the condition, do what you're going to do, in this case, console log, and then just increment objects so everything almost everything in JavaScript can be considered an object objects have properties and methods and methods is kind of a fancy way of just saying function alright so uh, we're gonna go over this in depth later on but if you want to create an object with some properties 
can see we're creating an object called person and we have these curly braces that's going to define it as an object and then we have different properties okay in this case we have name age and hair color now uh, strings should be in quotes either double or single and a um, numbers don't have to be in quotes to access a property we can simply say person dot name and that'll access this property here and of course we could do person dot age or person dot hair color in this case and then if there's a method attached to uh, to an object you can also use the dot syntax here so this would call the get name method on the person object conditionals and if statements these work just like uh, and if statements in any other programming language they'll run a block of code if something's true all right so in this case we have a variable called x which is equal to 10 and we're going to say if x is uh, greater than 5 then we're going to console log the word yes okay and x is greater than 5 it's 10 so this would run we can also attach an else in case it's not true so if x is greater than 5 say yes else if it's not then we're going to say no a switch can select one of many blocks of code to execute and this is often used as an alternative for an if statement in this case we're testing the value of x and we have, we apply different cases to it so if it's one if x equals one then this will go ahead and run it's just going to print out yes x is one and then it's important that we break out of that as well okay if it's two it's going to console log that and default basically happens if none of the above cases are true so in this case we're going to log no x is not one or two functions are blocks of code designed to run some kind of task um, they can be created and then invoked later on in this case we're creating a function called say hello you can see that we need to have our parentheses here and then a set of curly braces inside here you can do whatever you'd like in this case we're just going to log the text hello world you can also use parameters okay so here you can see we have a parameter called greeting so when we at when we run this function we can actually pass a value into it and it'll console log that value all right so I know that that was very very brief but don't worry about it we're gonna hit on all of those aspects of JavaScript as we move along and I'll see you in the next video